It's been six days since Britain's worst fire in living memory. They were warned several times, countless times. They were warned probably until the day before the fire. Panorama has been with the people of Grenfell Tower. We've got a 12 year old missing. As they deal with the worst possible news. Um, he, he, he died, um, yes. He didn't leave the house. As heroes are made. <laughs> as they ask, where's the help? What sort of official support have you had? Absolutely nothing. And demand to know how could this happen? The disaster of Grenfell Tower and why it should never have happened. Grenfell Tower on fire, fire brigade entering, fire spreading up. Look, whoa, look. It's one in the morning and the fire has started in a fridge in a flat on the fourth floor. Mahad and Jamie are next door. We heard a loud bang on the, the front door. door. Next thing you know, he's running in telling me there's a fire, I'll get the kids. We were on the fourth floor and it was um, the flat next door, I was number 16. Trying the best, they're trying the best. He grabbed the towels, wet them, put them on the kids' head and dragged us all out. Grenfell Tower in West London has 24 floors with up to six flats on each level, home to around 600 people. Four floors above the fire, one resident has stayed up late. I was playing PlayStation, I was, I was on the wall in front of the TV and I kept on smelling like kind of uh, plastic, plastic and I'm melting and I'm thinking, um, what's the smell? I saw the light outside my window, the flashing light. I saw smoke and, and uh, like um, sparks and flames up on the sixth to the seventh floor. That's when I realized there's a fire. The fire quickly swept around the whole building. I've got a friend of mine who lives with me. Around one o'clock, alarm went off. He ran into my, my room as well and uh, he said, look, uh, something is going on. At about half one, there's little sign of panic. On the eighth floor, Khalid is the only person awake. I opened the door to look into the corridor to see if other people were there as well. And that's when I realized that my whole floor was just quiet. No one had woken up, everyone was asleep. Rather than run for his life, Khalid starts waking his neighbors. I knocked on the door and he opened the door and he said, uh, what's wrong? And I go, there's a fire. But within minutes, the hall is full of smoke. The whole corridor just went pitch black and it was just smoke. Higher up, on the 11th floor, Luca tries to find the staircase, but the smoke is too thick. I was almost unconscious, but I knew a friend of mine still in the apartment, and uh, I couldn't leave him in the apartment, and I decided to go back to pick him up. He was in shock, he was shaking, he was frightened completely. We, we took deep breath, both of us, with the clots, on the mouth and uh, I was trying to find a way to the fire escape. Luckily, we found it. Somebody was banging on the, on the door from inside, from the hallway side. We opened the door, there was a lady, Asian lady, maybe 70 plus. She was crying, she was really, really out of control. We managed to get down, I don't know, two floors. I was trying to, to carry her and then I, I asked her, can you, can you walk? Like, we will help you. We're not gonna leave you. And uh, she said, okay, just, just don't leave me. Oh no, oh my God. When I walked, when I was out of the building, 
seeing people come from other areas and, and scream, my granddad's in there, my dad's in there, my brother's in there, my sister's in there, my friend's in there, that made it a hundred times worse. A ferocious fire is now ripping through people's homes. Oh my God. Oh, yo, 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 yo. Oh. It literally looked like it was fizzing. I think no more than half an hour after the flames were popping out of the window, the whole building was in mass. On the ground, neighbours like Joe watch in horror. I actually saw two figures just drop. I could see their arms and things, arms and legs and stuff moving. Look, 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 there's someone in the top with his chain in his leg. SOS, SOS. That was the worst part for me. When, when you see people, you can actually see these are human beings, actual human body, people like us. He's made the rope from his blankets and he sent it down. Whether they jumped, whether they felt that there was, you know, it was just instinct and you wanted to get away from the heat or anything like that, I genuinely don't know. But that was when it became... That was when it became... burned on my memory. Britain wakes to a disaster zone in the heart of London. A tower block still burning out of control. Firefighters are still trying to get people out. They said to her, they're coming. They're coming for you. They're coming to get you. Um, I, I don't know if they did. It's already clear many are dead. And scores of people are unaccounted for. This is the longest day. There's very little official information. Everywhere you go, people are worried or searching or grieving. I heard all sorts of news. One whole family came out, but they're all in the coma. You know? And other families, other families only. Four kids came out. She has about ten or eight. The smoking building sits above the whole area. Now this is a traumatised area because people watched it happen. They watched the horror unfold. And people have said to us, look, the bodies are still in there. We're looking at that and the bodies are still in there. Alongside the searching and the horror, something extraordinary happens. Okay, can you bring this man forward? People go onto the streets and start giving their time and their possessions to those in need. Yeah, baby food and baby milk, yeah? I turned on the news and just ran straight down here, grabbed clothes and water. We're trying to help with trauma. We have Vickers, a trauma team here, and we ask the local public to donate and bring, which you can see. There's been a great response. This is amazing. It, it's, it seems completely spontaneous. All these people have come here just to help, to give what they can, to do what they can, to volunteer. I, I spent 13 and a half years in the fire service and ran a fire brigade. This is humanity. This is what life should be about. Someone's in trouble, we will come and help. You might expect an emergency plan, even the army, but there only seems to be volunteers offering help on the streets. So many people have come out around the community. Yeah, yeah. Um, she's giving me an ending. You know, we're all, we're all together and it, 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 it's a community. 
how we're going to get over it, it, it it's a different problem at the end of the first day the official number of dead is 12 but those who live around the tower know many more have been lost But be honest in the heart, you know there's no there's the survivors from up on the top floor. There, there's no one there, is there? There's no one. We know they're all dead. We've, we've got a 12 year old missing. It's been 21 hours since Mahad escaped from the fourth floor. Some of Mahad's friends thought he was dead. They've just found out he and his partner are alive. But many can't find who they're looking for. Maria knows her brother was near the top of the tower block at 1 a.m. just as the fire started. My brother, he lives on the 20th floor. He is a disabled and he, he cannot walk. My mom called him one o'clock in the morning and he told her there is fire. She told him, come down. He told her, no, the poli I called the police and the police said to me, don't leave your flat. And they, uh, they asked me to put towel on the, on, the, on the door. He was talking, but he said he couldn't breathe from the smoke. What do you think has happened to your brother? Gone. Gone. That's all I think is gone. While we're filming, a friend arrives with news. When did you spoke to say? 3.30. 3.30? 3.30 and what he said? Um, he, he... He died, yes? I don't know, we don't know, but he didn't leave the house. He didn't leave the house. And there was, there was the friend spoke to Maria's brother much later in the yes, night yes, and he was still trapped on the 20th floor. So he couldn't make it? I, I don't know. No, no. Is oh, it black by... Uh, he doesn't go out. He's okay, from, Maria. Uh, he's dying up there. So many people dead or missing. One question stands out. How can a small kitchen fire in one flat lead to all this loss. <laughs> On the streets, you hear the same points being raised. People here have four main concerns. That residents were told to stay in their flats. That there was no central fire alarm or sprinkler system. And that the cladding on the outside of the building, it seemed to spread the fire. It's important to understand the way these concrete blocks were designed. Fires are supposed to be contained in individual flats, so you don't necessarily need sprinklers or central alarms because the building's fireproof structure should give firefighters enough time. So why didn't that happen in Grenfell Tower? Panorama has been told by senior fire sources and residents that firefighters did put out the initial fridge fire. The fire in the flat was out. The plan was working. The danger should have been over. Staying put would have been the right advice. Quick, guys! Quick, quick, guys! But crucial changes had been made to the tower's once fireproof exterior. 
So this building has been taken from a safe building where fire could not possibly spread across the surface of the building from flat to flat to one which was a death trap. Grenfell Tower had been covered in cladding as part of a refurbishment a couple of years ago. It was supposed to help insulate the building. The cladding used was the cheaper, less fire resistant variety. So it's the cladding that changes everything. That safety model doesn't work if the fire spreads rapidly. And that seems to be what happened here. I think there are questions definitely to be asked about the quality of the cladding. There's questions about how the cladding was applied to the building. For example, what happens if flame gets behind the cladding? I would say it is wicked that these people have lost their lives totally and utterly unnecessarily. I will admit I broke down and cried. I knew that there will be a huge number of fatalities. What I also knew is that I had warned about this. It was foreseeable and these deaths are totally and utterly unnecessary. So what's the view of the man who runs the council that owns the building? Nobody designs a building that does what happened on Wednesday morning. That is nobody's uh, intention or expectation. But it does we happen if you don't spend the money properly, because the design is flawed, because the material is cheap. It's banned in other countries, sir. We will need to look at that material, at the specification for what was done in the refurbishment of Grenfell Tower, but the council's intention at the time was, was to improve those, uh, those homes. The authorities had been warned about the dangers of renovating tower blocks. Six people were killed after a fire in a modernised building in London in 2009. By 2013, the government was promising a review of safety regulations. It still hasn't happened. The Parliamentary Fire Safety Group has written to the government about a dozen times, warning lives are in danger. Panorama has obtained those letters. The MPs say, can we really afford to wait for another tragedy? They complain life safety implications are not considered to be urgent. And just two months ago, they were still warning the government, it is now time to listen. The government acknowledged that producing a statement on building regulations had taken longer than expected. Today, the government told us that it still doesn't have a timeline for the review it promised in 2013. Red tape is seen as a burden. Well, red tape is the sort of thing that says you have a one-hour fire door on your flat. That's red tape to some people. To people living in a block of flats, that's the difference between life and death. The government now says the cladding at Grenfell Tower was already banned. But that's not true. The regulations are unclear. That's why it's still being used. We have spent four years saying, listen, we've got the evidence. We've provided you with the evidence. There is clear uh, public opinion towards this, and I think, you know, you ought to move on it. The building management company and the council who own the building didn't have to rely on official warnings. They were told by those who live in Grenfell Tower that the building wasn't safe. In a blog six months ago, the residents predicted a disaster. Only a catastrophic event will expose the ineptitude and incompetence of our landlord. The Grenfell Action Group predict that it won't be long before the words of this blog come back to haunt KCTMO management. They can't say that they haven't been warned. They were warned several times, countless times. They were warned before the regeneration, they were warned during the regeneration, they were warned after the regeneration, you know, and they were warned probably until the day before the fire. And what did they do about it? They did nothing. They were ignored, sir. They were ignored, sir, weren't they? They, 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 they said there would be a catastrophe, and there was. Sadly, there has been a catastrophe. I don't think anybody can deny there's been a catastrophe. But what's concerning me and the council at this stage is, first of all, um, 
why the fire started and secondly why it spread so quickly. That rapid spread meant firefighters were walking into a multi-story inferno, a situation they had never seen before. That's a real block. Oh. How is that possible? It jumped up all the way along the back. That was that. I've never heard of an incident where people are actually discussing the possibility that people might not come out. Despite that, large numbers of firefighters went into that building. I know that normal procedures were broken, um, normal safety rules were, were broken. Uh, because well, they risked their lives? Yeah, they risked their lives uh, to try and save other people's lives. Sorry. So where does this disaster leave the thousands across the country who live in renovated flats? If there's a fire, should they stay or run? The government has announced a review of all high-rise buildings, particularly those with cladding. I hope it's a turning point. It cannot be ignored. There are 4,000 tower blocks that were identified back in 2009. Those people have the right to live in safety. Over the course of the week, the volunteer army grew and grew. By Friday, so much had been donated, the community was struggling to keep up. To the council, I would like to say, please, could you free up some storage for us? Because everywhere is saying, we're full, we're full, and yet more people are bringing, so what, what do we do? I've been here since the beginning, and one of the amazing things about what's happened here is the way the community has pulled together and sort of spontaneously looked after itself. It's incredibly impressive. What I also have to say is I have seen very little official help. Now, it, it may be here, but I haven't seen it. And neither have many of the local residents. They go off at any point. That's why we need them. Hey, listen, uh, we're going to talk here one at a time here. Yeah? What's making us angry is that where do you see any real officials doing anything? If Come this on. was two weeks ago when the election was happening, every councillor would have been down here yeah. vying for votes. This is the poor city and you've got the rich city. We pay our taxes, I work. If you're paying your taxes and you are a, a resident in this community, why aren't you not counted as one? Yeah, they know this is the richest borough of, like, of London. They're trying to get poor people out. You telling me if this building was, it was the rich people living there, they wouldn't have been put off like within half an hour. If it was, it's just poor people dying. That's what it is. Many here do think if they were wealthy, there'd be more support. And with nobody apparently taking responsibility, the prime minister has become a target. This is all publicity is done to show that she has some type of heart and soul. And she really doesn't. It's cold. We need to hear you talk. This is awful. But the council is the main focus of anger. A crowd gathers at Kensington Town Hall. People are very angry here and truthfully this has been coming. For the first couple of days, people were just smashed by what had happened. But now, people are demanding answers. Three days since the fire, this has now become a flashpoint. This door here, the door to the council, has become the focus of all the anger a community feels. They've got lots of questions. They're very angry at the people inside here. People don't want, on the whole here, I think, a confrontation, but there is one now, right at the front of this building. The 
crowd marches back to Grenfell Tower. It takes them through some of Britain's richest streets. What do you think of what's happening? This protest is fantastic. I Why? Mean, because what happened is an absolute outrage and terribly sad for this community. And the council don't listen to what people would say. We are one! People want to come to our communities and divide it. That's not happening. Yeah. Stick together, because we are one! The people who died in that tower were let down by the system. The people who survived feel that they were let down again because they got no help. Do you feel guilty, sir? I'm obviously extremely um, upset by the scale of the devastation that took place last Wednesday morning, and I support all the efforts that are being put into place, the inquiries that are being set up. The latest prediction is that 79 people lost their lives in the Grenfell Tower fire. Mahad has given up completely on support from the authorities. I have not seen the head of the Kensington and Chelsea housing come out to the victims and say, we're working on this. The people who are responsible for the safety of Kensington and Chelsea community are not doing enough. Joe has been moved back into his apartment block next to the tower. And Luca, who escaped from the 11th floor, has been reunited with the woman yeah. he saved. Are you the one? Yeah, I am. We got to oh go for Joe. As far as I remember, I know a big man who picked me up without thinking, and just the door and put me up. Oh my God! <laughs> 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 Today, the country paused to remember those who died in the tower. What started as a kitchen fire brought Britain to a halt. A disaster that showed how the state failed to protect people and then failed to look after those who survived. Grenfell Tower stands as a monument to a system that simply didn't work.